and subtract rational expressions. Just like fractions, you need a common denominator and you add or subtract the numerators. So in this example here, my numerator is the 8y and my denominator is y minus 2. Sometimes when you're adding and subtracting rational expressions, you'll have to use the distributive property and combine like terms. And lastly, your answer needs to be in simplest form, so sometimes you will have to factor to reduce. So here's an example. We have a common denominator of y minus 2, so I can subtract in this case the numerators, and I end up getting 8y minus 16 over my common denominator of y minus 2. Now I need to simplify, and to simplify I need to factor, and in this case the numerator will factor with the GCF of 8, so I end up getting 8 parentheses y minus 2. Now I can reduce the common factor of y minus 2, and my answer is 8. In this next example, you see we have a common denominator, the common denominator of 3y squared, but in the second rational expression, you have to be careful because in the numerator, we have an algebraic expression x plus 1. So you want to put parentheses around any expression in the numerator so that when you do the addition or subtraction, you do the distributive property. So it's really important when you have an expression to put parentheses around it. So now when I add here, or subtract in this case, I get x minus x plus 1 over my common denominator of 3y squared. So I need to do the distributive property here with that minus or negative, and I'm going to get x minus x minus 1. So it's really important you just distribute that all the way through to everything that's in that numerator. And then you combine like terms here, and you see our x's cancel out, and we're left with the negative 1 over 3y squared, or the negative 1 over 3y squared. And this next example, you see we have common denominator, and the common denominator is that x squared plus 3x minus 18. So I'm going to add the numerators, and I get 6 plus x all over my common denominator of x squared plus 3x minus 18. And now I'm going to need to factor and simplify. And on the bottom, the trinomial will factor to x minus 3, x plus 6. Now you notice that I have 6 plus x in the numerator. Well, because it's addition, I can switch that around and have the x plus 6 so I can simplify the common factors. And in this case, I'm left with 1 over x minus 3. So be careful here because I canceled out the factor in the top, so I'm left with 1 on top, and the denominator is x minus 3. Pause and try. So you have your common denominator. You have x, uh, 5x minus 15 all over x minus 3. You factor out the GCF, and you cancel out the common factors, and you get your solution is equal to 5. Pause and try. So in this case, you had a common denominator x minus 5 over x squared minus 25. x squared minus 25 is the difference of two squares, so that's going to factor to x minus 5, x plus 5. I can cancel out my common factor, and I'm left with 1 over x plus 5. Pause and try. You have a common denominator of x squared plus 2x minus 15. You get 4x minus 12 in the numerator, you need to factor both the numerator and the denominator here. So you end up with 4 times x minus 3 all over x minus 3 times x plus 5. We're going to cancel out the common factors of x minus 3, and we're left with 4 over x plus 5. In this next example, you see that we do not have a common denominator, so we're going to need to find the least common denominator. And in order to do this, you want to first look at the numerical part. 
Look at the 10 and 25 and find the least common multiple or the least common denominator. Now you can always use the latter method when we're working with the numbers. So when I'm looking at 10 and 25, the least common denominator would be 50. And now when you're looking at the variable part, it's always going to be the variable with the highest exponent. So in this case, it's going to be x squared. So my least common denominator will be 50x squared. So I need to convert both of these fractions to have a common denominator of 50x squared. So looking at my first fraction, 3 over 10x squared, I need to convert 10x squared to be 50x squared. So I already have the x squared, so I just need to multiply something to this to get 50. So I'm going to multiply 5 to 10 to get 50x squared, and whatever I do to the denominator, I need to do to the numerator. So I end up getting 15 over 50x squared. My second rational expression, I need to convert to 50x squared, and I see that I do not have the x squared or the 50, so I have to multiply by the 2 to get my 50 and an x to get an x squared. So I'm multiplying the top and the bottom by 2x to get the 50x squared, and I end up getting 14x over my 50x squared. Now I have a common denominator, so I'm going to add, in this case, the numerators, and I get 15 plus 14x all over 50x squared. Nothing's going to simplify here, so that's my answer. Pause and try. So we have a common denominator here of 40x squared. The first rational expression I multiply by 5x to get that 40x squared, and I end up getting 25x in my numerator. The second rational expression, I'm multiplying by 4 to get that 40x squared, and I get 44 as my numerator. And now I add the numerators, and I get 25x plus 44 over my common denominator of 40x squared. Nothing will simplify. That would be my answer. This next example, you see I have a denominator of 3x and a denominator of x plus 1. Neither one of these denominators have common factors, so the only way to get the least common denominator is to take the two denominators and multiply them together. So my common denominator will be 3x, parentheses, x plus 1. So now I need to convert the first fraction to have the denominator of 3x, x plus 1. Because I have the 3x, I need to multiply the denominator and the numerator by the x plus 1, the piece that's missing. So now you see here, we're going to end up having the distributive property when I multiply the 2 to the x plus 1. In the second rational expression, the piece that's missing is my 3x, so I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3x, and I get 15x over my common denominator of 3x times x plus 1. So now I'm going to do the distributive property, and I get 2x plus 2 plus 15x all over my common denominator of 3x, parentheses, x plus 1. Now I'm going to combine like terms, and I'm going to get 17x plus 2 all over 3x, x plus 1. Nothing will simplify. This is my answer. Pause and try. My common denominator is going to be y, y plus 3. I'm going to convert the first fraction by multiplying the numerator and denominator by y plus 3. So I'm going to have the distributive property of 6 times y plus 3. The second rational expression I'm multiplying by y. I end up getting 2y. I'm going to do the distributive property here. I get 6y plus 18 plus the 2y all over my common denominator of y times y plus 3. I combine like terms, I get 8y plus 18 all over y times y plus 3.